Hi everybody, it's Mr. Bowman. One of my sons is helping me out on camera. Hello to him, he knows he's here. Um, I thought we should start with some cooking. So we're gonna make some bread dough. Now this is not a normal bread dough, it's not a normal bread, it's something really fun and easy to do at home. Now I have a stand mixer, but not everyone does have a stand mixer. So I'm gonna show you how you can make it by hand, just using a big bowl, like this bowl right here. With all you need is a few ingredients. So I'm gonna put up our ingredient board. These are all the ingredients you need. So we've got four and a half cups of flour. We've got one and a half tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, two teaspoons of yeast. We'll go over yeast in a second. Three tablespoons of olive oil and 15 ounces of pretty warm water. We're looking at about 105 degrees or so, something like that, okay? So that's where like you touch it, you go, ooh, that's warm because it's above body temperature. It's about what we're looking for here. Now we'll go a thing at a time. Let's start with our flour. Now I already put a few cups in here. I put four cups in here. I didn't put the last half cup in here because I want to show you something. If you're not used to this, it's important when you're measuring that you level off. If I scoop out of my flour, I've got a whole bunch of flour there. So if I take the back of a knife and I scrape it, it's not perfect. It looks all nice. I can do it a couple times if I love. There you go, perfect. And put that right in here. I've now got four and a half cups of flour. Let's set this out of our way. Now next on our list is what? I've got the one and a half tablespoons of sugar. So I'm gonna go, same thing, I wanna have them leveled off. This is my little sugar bin. I'm gonna shake it a little bit. It's leveled off, one tablespoon. I'm gonna go to a half here, half tablespoon, leveled off. Put that right in. Next we're gonna go with salt. I'm gonna grab the salt, just hold on one second. Here we go, I forgot it all the way over there. We've got one tablespoon of salt. It's my little salt cellar. Now, I use kosher salt. If you don't have kosher salt, any kind of salt will do, but as we talked about in class, kosher salt's really good. So we're gonna dump that right in there. Now, two teaspoons of yeast. We need to talk about yeast for a second. This is active dry yeast. You can get it in the grocery store. It comes in strips of three. It comes in like a little chain of them. It's not very expensive, and you don't need the fancy stuff. This is just fine. Now, one of these packets is about two and a quarter teaspoons. That extra teaspoon, quarter teaspoon's not gonna hurt us, so I'm gonna dump in this whole thing. Now, yeast is a lot. It's in a suspended kind of animation until it gets warm water put on it. So when the warm water gets it, it's gonna to come to life. Now here's what it looks like. It's just these little granules. They kind of look like little bits of sand. Now they are a leavening agent. They're the thing that's gonna make the whole, it's gonna make the bread kind of rise up. It's gonna make it like what we think of as bread. Oh, now I knew I forgot. I'm gonna take off my wedding ring. I've already washed my hands quite a few times. I'm taking it off because this is all gonna get very messy and we're gonna be using our hands for it. Now next, our list, after our yeast, we have our olive oil. Now that means we're done with our dry ingredients. Before we start putting in liquid ingredients, we need to mix all this stuff together a little bit. So I have a fork here, there's all this, and I'm just gonna start to kinda mix all of my dry ingredients together. Now I had everything in a pile, and I'm gonna mix it up real quick. If I don't do that, I'm gonna get clumps. That's not good. I don't wanna have isolated pockets of yeast. I want all of my yeast mixed up, and that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna keep mixing. Right now. Oh, <laughs> there we are. So we're working on our systems. So I've got my dry ingredients all mixed, and now I'm gonna put in my wet ingredients. Now I'm gonna start off with my olive oil. So I need two tablespoons of, oh, I'm sorry, three tablespoons of olive oil. One, two, three. Now we're doing this in just a bowl, and we're gonna be mixing it by hand. So this is gonna get a little bit messy, but it's all gonna work out. Now, I don't have a 15 ounce measuring cup, but I do have two smaller ones. So I got this one here, and just pour it right in. So that's eight ounces of warm water. Here's another seven ounces of warm water. Now this one, it starts to get kind of exciting. Right now, I just kind of have a big mess in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just working it with my hands. Now this is gonna be sticky, and it's a little bit warm, What's gonna happen is, I'm slowly gonna be integrating everything together. Now measurements on things like this are a little bit imprecise. On the one hand, you'd think it'd be exactly perfect all the time, but it's really not. If it gets too dry, add more water. If it's too wet, add more flour. But pretty quickly, you can see it starts to come together. Now, what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to kinda of get it off between my fingers now having a mixer, you can just throw this all in with the dough hook and it'll mix itself up and it'll all be very easy. But 
for hundreds and thousands of years, people didn't have mixers and dough hooks, you can make bread dough with your hands. And this works out quite well. So I'm gonna keep going and going for quite a while here. Now while I'm doing this, let's talk about what we're gonna do with this bread dough. This bread dough is gonna to have to rest. I'll show you how to let it rest in a bit, and we'll talk about resting times. After we're done with it, it's gonna be able to do a, th a few things. One, this is a terrific pizza crust dough. If you wanna make pizza by, uh, from scratch at home, this dough is gonna really cook up nicely. I'm gonna to have to put in more flour here. So, in a moment I'll do that. You can make an awesome, awesome pizza crust. The other thing you can do with this, here you go ahead and look at me, Jet. The other thing you can do with this is, whoa, very close up. The other thing you can do with this is make a quick bread. And we're gonna be making quick breads together. Uh, it's not technically a quick bread, I call it that. It's kind of like a cross between pita and naan. It's a flat bread that we're gonna make. You can make it on a grill, you can make a pan in a pan, you can do all kinds of things. All right, I'm gonna put in more flour. I'll see you in just a second. Okay, go ahead, stop. Okay, hit go. Okay, so this is starting to come together. This is my dough ball. Now what I did was I just dipped my fingers in the flour and brought it back over. My fingers were so sticky, I brought over plenty of flour with my fingers. And you see, as I mix it, it's coming off my hands. Now as I'm mixing this and kneading it, I put it back in my bowl, which has a lot of flour left in it. And the wet spots on the dough will pick up the flour. And then I continue to incorporate it with my hands like this. And as I'm rolling it over, what I'm doing is I'm making strands. Now, you've heard people say that they're allergic to gluten. Gluten is the protein that lives in wheat. And I'm making gluten strands when I do this. As I mix it up, I'm making strands of gluten. Now, these protein strands are what give bread its chewiness. It's why when you have gluten-free bread, it tastes a little funky. Even the taste might be okay on gluten-free bread, but the texture is all off because the protein strands are what make bread into what we think of as bread. Now we're gonna let this rest for a little bit after I get everything incorporated and after it doesn't have too many sticky bits to it. It's still a little bit sticky right now. Now as I'm going, if you're worried, oh my God, my hands will never be clean again. There's so much stuck to my hands. Just give them a quick rub together, not too heavy, and you'll see that all these little things will come off and get incorporated back into it. Now again, it's very important that you wash your hands before we did all this because it's very hand intensive work. But that's okay, it's all gonna get cooked and you're cooking for your family. And if you go to any really refined bakery, their techniques are not far from this. A lot of handmade food is indeed handmade, okay? So, oh, hello, hi. So, good job. I think the camera work is actually coming along really well, buddy, you're doing great. So, here's what we're gonna do. I have my dough. It's entirely hand mixed and hand kneaded, which is kind of cool. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it rest. Now there's two ways I can do this. One, I can switch it to a bowl with oil in it. I can oil up the bowl and let it sit in there and rest. It's a fine thing to do. Depending on how, how soon I wanna use it, I can let it rest for an hour, two hours at room temperature, and it'll start to swell and get really big. Or I can take it right now and cut it into like quarters probably, and I can put it into little Ziploc bags, not real little, like quart size bags, and I can set those in the fridge. Now, it can slow rise for about 24 hours, or I can let it rise at room temperature, just sitting here in my kitchen. What we're gonna do, is we're gonna get an oiled bowl, and then we're gonna let it rise here at room temp for a little bit. Go ahead, hit stop. I am. Okay, so we're gonna transfer over. I've got a different bowl, a clean bowl. You can use metal, glass, whatever. Glass is nice, but I don't have any glass bowls. I'm pouring in a little olive oil, not a lot. It's maybe a teaspoon or so. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread the oil all over the inside so that it's effectively greased up. I'm gonna take this and put it in here. I'm gonna make sure it's oiled all around because my dough is gonna rise and I don't want it to stick. So I've got my greased up, oiled up bowl. Now I've got my nice, beautiful dough ball and put that right in here. And then I'm gonna take a cloth, I'm gonna cover it with a cloth. You can use saran wrap if you want, but I like using a cloth, it feels more old school. I have this one of a woman wrestling an alligator. It says, do one thing every day that scares your family. I like that very much. We're gonna take this, we're gonna cover it up. I'm just gonna let it sit at room temperature for about an hour or so. What's gonna happen is it's gonna rise up. All the, all the yeast in there, here, you can look at me. 
Here's what yeast are. Yeast are little creatures. They're effectively like bacteria. And yeast do two things. They reproduce and they fart. And that's about it. As they consume the sugar, they're gonna eat the sugar that's in the dough. That's why we have sugar in the dough. The water wakes them up and brings them back to life. They eat the sugar and they fart a bunch. They excrete and their excretion, they do so much farting, it makes the dough expand. It puts gas in there and expands it out. It's also why yeast breads taste a certain way. They taste like, well, yeast farts. But I kind of like the taste of yeast farts. Lots of people do. Now, if you don't have yeast and you can't get your hands on any, you have a couple options. One, you could actually start up a yeast starter from yeast that's just in the air in your life. You can look up how to do it online. It's kind of a project, but it's a pretty cool science project. The other thing you can do is you can use baking soda or baking powder. Now, I didn't, I haven't actually tried this. I looked it up. You can do it. Part of the key is you need to cut the amount of salt in half if you do that, because the chemical reactions are a little different. I can try doing that, let you know how it goes, but I haven't actually done it yet. So we're gonna let that rest, and we'll check in with it in about an hour. Okay, you can hit stop. Right now. All right, so we're back to it. So we've let this rest about 45 minutes or so. Now, I put a little bit of olive oil around my dough ball so it wouldn't dry out. Let's take a look. It's just about doubled in size. It's quite a bit bigger. Now, here we have some options. I'm gonna do a couple things with my bread dough today. Go ahead. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple things with mine today. One, I'm gonna save some, I'm gonna make pizza with the boys later. And we can put some of that video on here too. But I wanna show you something easy you can do if you don't wanna feel like making pizza. This is gonna be something a lot easier. So, I've got my dough, it's got not a lot of nice springiness to it. That yeast is doing its thing. It's bouncing back a little bit, so that's good. I'm gonna take my bread flour, just regular flour. You can use general flour for all this. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a shot of this. We're gonna flour up a cutting board a little bit so it's not sticky. And then I'm gonna grab a handful of this dough. And this can be real rough. Now, I'm gonna make this pretty thin. I'm gonna pat it out. I'm gonna get it floured up. Make sure you can see it. And then I'm gonna start stretching it. Now, when you're stretching for pizza or whatever else, gravity's gonna do a lot of work. Just pull and turn, pull and turn. It'll start to get translucent. You can actually to see the light coming through it a little bit. So, that's the point at which this would actually be a nice little pizza right here. But we're not gonna do a pizza. We're gonna do something else. We're gonna do something real cool. We're gonna do grilled quick breads. So now here's how this is gonna work. I have over here, go ahead and get a shot over here. I have this grill pan. Now I have it sitting on the fire, this is already hot. Now this is a grill pan, it's got little raised edges on it because I'm using it indoors. You could do this on a barbecue grill, barbecue grill or just on any hot pan really. Now I'm gonna get that nice and hot, turn up the heat. Now back here, we've got our bread uh, kind of laid out. I'm gonna take this. I don't need any flat, any kind of oil or anything, because since it's already floured up, it's not gonna stick. I'm just gonna lay it right on here. Come over and check it out. Lay it right on there. I'm just gonna let that cook. Now while that's cooking, I'm gonna show you this butter that I have. Now this is what's called a hotel butter. It's just regular butter that I got from the store. I let it sit out on the counter for about an hour, just to get it soft, to get it room temperature. And then what I did was I mixed in, I mixed in a bunch of different seasonings. I put in like garlic powder and onion powder and cayenne pepper and Italian seasonings. Pretty much any seasonings you have in your pantry, just mix it in with the butter and now you have a seasoned butter. This is really good. Make a bunch of it. I make a bunch of it at a time. This is two sticks worth. Now I mix it all up and I just hang on to it. It's great on bread or if I'm cooking and I just need a little flavor and a little oil tossed in with my food chicken, pasta, whatever, take a scoop of this, throw it in the pan, suddenly I've already seasoned and oiled my pan, which is pretty cool. I've already seasoned all my food. This is super helpful. I just have this in my fridge all the time. But I took it out of the fridge just now to let it soften up a little bit because I'm gonna eat it with my bread. All right, come on over here. Let's see how our bread's doing. So it's in my pan. It's cooking. It's pretty hot. Now you would probably want to use tongs for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and check it right here. I'm gonna pick it up. See those lines on it? It's just cooking. This is gonna be perfect flatbread. It's gonna be really good. It's gonna have a lot of, it's not tons of, it's not like sourdough levels of flavor, but it's gonna have more flavor than like white bread or something like that. It's gonna have a nice kind of crispness to it, kind of like a pita has, which is pretty neat. I'm gonna let it keep cooking. Now, I gotta admit, 
I like it so it's a little bit burnt. I like it to have a little bit of char on it. I think it gives it more character. So we're gonna let that finish up cooking. Take just a minute or two more. We've been recording this live and we haven't had any cuts and this is gonna cook up real quick. We're talking about like a minute or so on each side, not very much. So now the thinner you roll it out, of course, the faster it'll cook. So we can go ahead and get another piece going. While that one's cooking, I just pull off another piece of my dough, put it on my floured board, pat it out. If I need a little more flour, I can always put on a little more flour, no problem. And then we're in good shape. Now this bread is pretty cool. Sometimes I'll just make big sheets of it instead of the little one like I made earlier for us. Make a big sheet of it and then take a knife and cut it into strips or squares or whatever I want. And then that's bread. Whenever I'm having people over or if I'm just feeding my sons or whatever, we have this stuff all the time. Because once I've made this dough, I can take it and I can put it in Ziploc bags, just parcel it out, cut it into pieces, put it in Ziploc bags, throw it in the fridge. It'll last a couple days, not much more than that. But don't worry, if you find you're not gonna use it, put those balls of dough in the Ziploc bags in the freezer and they'll thaw out whenever you want and be great for this kind of stuff. So it's actually really versatile. Or it can be pizza dough, or it can be bread. It can be whatever you want. Let's see if it's ready to switch this one in. Let's go. And this one, I'm gonna flip it over. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. I like to have a little bit of dark spots on it. I like to have a little bit of burn. So, we're gonna take this out. Well, actually, let's grab a plate. Hold on one second. Got my plate here. My cameraman is doing an excellent job. Now, it didn't stick because it already had the flour on it, and the flour is gonna keep from sticking. Now, my pan will get a little bit smoky, so you might wanna put on a fan because the flour on it will start to burn and the pan will get really, really hot. Here's my next piece. And it's okay if it's kind of irregular, funny shape, or like, oh, it's like a weird dog head or something. It doesn't matter if it's got a funny shape to it. It kind of adds to its charm and its appeal, and then people know it's handmade. They know they made it from scratch. Now let's go here and try this with some of this butter. Let's see. We got our butter, we got our bread. I'm just gonna tear off a piece of it here. Look at that, it's all cooked and ready to go. Let's see how it is. Oh, should let it soften a little more, that's all right. Oh, there we go, I got my bread and butter. And it's pretty good. That's really good. This is a great way to have a nice snack. Bread and butter, a little seasoning, and salt. Doesn't get much better than this. Mmm. All right. So that's how you make quick breads. In a little bit, we'll get how to make pizza. But really, even if I don't add on this video how to make pizza, this quick bread recipe. Excellent. If you do decide to make pizza, just roll it out, put on your tomato sauce and your cheese, and bake it in your oven at as high a temperature as possible. If you can do it on your grill, even better, because you really want high temperatures on this stuff. All right, until next time, let me know if you have any suggestions or ideas or things you'd like me to show you how to make. See you then.